any remuneration paid by the employer to his employee for the service rendered by the employee it is called salary if in case you are receiving any income from or any salary from united nation organization that is from uno then that is not taxable that is exempted under the income tax rule allowance is nothing but the monetary benefit given by the employer to his employee is called allowances Hello everyone I'm Arun Kumar lecturer in department of commerce and management Vidyashram Prescott College the temple of excellence Mysore dear students welcome to this new session session number 1 on unit number 3 that is income from salary so you all know about what subject I'm discussing I'm sub discussing about the subject income tax law and practice 1 which is there for 5th sem bcom students who are studying under university of mysore yes dear student so far we completed with unit 1 and unit 2 now we are in unit number 3 session 1 that is the name of the unit income from salary so in this unit dear students we are going to learn about what and all the aspects which comes under salary and what and all the definitions we have under the you know uh, head of income from salary and how to compute income from salary of a individual person for example if you are earning a salary how to compute your total salary for a year and how to compute the tax if it is needed so let us start with the meaning of salary so what is salary any remuneration paid by the employer to his employee for the service rendered by the employee okay any remuneration paid by the employer to his employee for the service rendered by the employee is called salary for example in case if you are working with any it company what you will do you go and do the job you go and do whatever the job allotted by your employer at the end you will receive the salary right so you just served your company or you completed the work whichever the work assigned by your employer and he paid you some money that money is called what salary so any remuneration paid by the employer to the employee for the service rendered by the employee is called salary next salary means remuneration or any amount received by the employee for from an employer in return for work performance and is known as salary as yes, again any remuneration or any amount received by the employee by the employer for the service rendered by the employee or the service performed by the employee is also called salary with respect to income from salary next salary includes so what is this salary the salary includes so many aspects if you are receiving 1 lakh rupees per month that 1 lakh rupees is inclusive of n number of other components or other elements so together of all the elements or all the allowances perquisites deductions exemptions and the basic salary everything is called your total salary right so it includes the basic pay salary includes basic salary bonus if you are receiving bonus that bonus will also be called salary if you are receiving commission on your sales that commission will also comes under salary and incentives if you are receiving any incentives that will be also your salary leave salary for example el that is earned leave or cl casual leave so if you take 1 cl or 2 cl in a month you will get salary they will not cut your salary they will not mark lop they will not mark loss of pay they will pay you salary so that will be also your salary earned leave in a year you will be having 15 to 30 els but what you will do you are not going to take the els at all so at the end of the year what your employer will do the employer pay you the cash for the number of els saved that is the number of earned leaves saved so that also comes under salary cca city compensatory allowances if your employer is giving city compensatory allowances then that will be also considered as your salary hra house rent allowances if your employer is giving you house rent allowances that is also called salary next rfa that is rent free accommodation for example in your you know, company have free quarters facility so that is called rent free accommodation the, for that you will be paying some amount that will be also considered as salary next all perquisites pensions and gratuity is called salary so whatever the amount you receive whatever the amount you receive from your employer that is called 
salary, whatever the amount, okay, whether it's you know house rent allowances or city compensatory allowances or uniform allowances or traveling allowances or telephone bill paid by your employer or the bonus commission or incentives, basic salary, whatever you receive, the sum of money you received from the employer is called salary for computation of income from salary of an individual person. And it includes monetary and non-monetary value of benefits and facilities which are provided by the employer to the employee. Yes, here any monetary benefits and any non-monetary benefits which are received by the employee, by his employer will also be considered as the component of your salary. So salary means any you know person or any employee receives the salary from the employer for the service rendered. Okay. Some of the amount or the remuneration received by the employee by the employer for the service rendered is called salary and salary includes the basic salary, bonus, commission, incentives, allowances, perquisites, gratuity and all the monetary and non-monetary benefits which are provided by the employer to his employee. So this is the meaning of salary. Now the salary includes, okay, I already told you in the last slide. Fine, again, the salary includes the wages, annuity, pension, gratuity, any fees, commission, perquisites, advance of salary, leave earned salary. Yes, the salary includes all these facilities. If all these are provided by your employer to you, okay, if it is provided by your employer to you, then this all components will be considered to compute your total annual salary or total gross salary. That is the wages, annuity, pension, gratuity, any fees, commission, perquisites, advance of salary, leave and salary. These all the components are supposed to be considered while you are computing the income from salary of an individual person. Exemption of salary. Certain we will not impose tax on salary, we will exempt it. That means we will not collect the tax at all. In what scenarios, in which situations we will not collect the tax and we will exempt it. The first thing is salary received from United Nation organization. Yes, if you are receiving salary from UNO, United Nation organization, at that time your salary will be exempted. If in case you are receiving any income from or any salary from United Nation organization that is from UNO, then that is not taxable that is exempted under the income tax rule. Next salary received by an non-resident of foreign citizen and employee of foreign enterprise but services rendered to India. For example, salary received by a non-resident of India, salary received by non-resident of India or salary received by a foreign employee, he is a foreign employee, he appointed by a foreign company but he is serving in India. Okay, At that time, it is exempted. We are not going to impose any tax because foreign company is paying him the tax, not the Indian company, right? He is also not a citizen of India, he is a non-resident of India. So if he is a non-resident and if he is appointed by the foreign company and if he is serving in India, then his salary is not taxable, his salary is exempted, that is exemption of salary. Next, salary and allowances received by a teacher or professor from SARC member state, okay? So here SARC, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. So if any salary or allowances received by a teacher or professor, any salary that is any allowances or salary received by a professor or a teacher from SARC member state, okay, that is also exempted from tax. Those teachers and professors need not to pay tax to the government on their salary. So in these three situations, it is exempted, they need not to pay tax to the government. Other than these scenarios, if you are receiving a salary, then you are supposed to pay tax to the government. Next, allowances. So what is the meaning of allowances? Section 10, subsection 14, intersection 1. So allowances is nothing but, allowances is a monetary benefit given by the employer to his employee. Allowances is nothing but, the monetary benefit given by the employer to his employee is called allowances. That means, for example, uniform allowances. To wash your uniform, every month they are giving you 1000 rupees. So they are giving you the cash that is called allowances. House rent allowances. To pay your house rent, 
your company or your employer giving you 6000 rupees every month is giving cash that is called allowances so any cash benefit given by the employer to his employee is called allowances and it is a cash benefit given to the employee monthly yes as i said it is a cash benefit given by the employer to the employee on monthly basis that is called allowances it is a sum of paid regularly in addition to a salary for the purpose of meeting some particular requirements connected with the services rendered by the employee yes it is a sum paid on monthly basis or on regular basis by the employer to his employee to meet some of his particular requirements to meet us this particular requirements those requirements are supposed to be connected with the connected with the services which he is rendering to the company or to the employer example for allowances traveling allowances or entertainment allowances or house rent allowances okay house rent allowances hra or traveling allowances ta or children education allowances or children hostel allowances we have n number of allowances those are called allowances because you will be paying in cash to the employee on regular basis this is the meaning of allowances so taxable allowances okay in this allowances we have mainly three categories taxable semi taxable semi not taxable and non taxable allowances okay taxable partially taxable and fully exempted allowances now you are looking into the taxable allowances so dearness allowances if the employer is providing the dearness allowances it is fully taxable next dearness pay it is also fully taxable next fixed medical allowances if the employer is giving fixed medical allowances it is also fully taxable tiffin allowances if it is given taxable hill allowances taxable hostel allowances taxable deputation allowances taxable overtime allowances taxable family allowances taxable project allowances and rural allowances these are all the allowances which are taxable as allowances next partially exempted allowances that means partially exempted partially taxable so in that house rent allowances yes certain part is exempted and some in certain part is taxable that is called partially exempted in case if you are receiving 10000 rupees so there is a exemption of 5000 rupees in this 10000 so this is called exemption okay what is the balance the remaining balance is 5000 this 5000 will be taxable so this is called partially taxable partially exempted so in that category we have house rent allowances traveling allowances conveyance allowances uniform allowances children education allowances in that the children education allowances is exempt up to 100 per month for 12 months for maximum of two children and children hostel allowances it is exempted up to 300 per month maximum of two children for 12 months so you might not get understood now you will understand while you are solving the problems so these are all the partially exempted allowances next fully exempted allowances so in fully exempted allowances foreign allowance that is allowance allowed by the government for posting an employee in outside india in case if you are a indian citizen and if you are appointed by indian company and if you are posted to go out of india and work in a foreign country then if any allowances is given to you that is exempted need not to pay on foreign allowances next allowances to high court and supreme court judge so any allowances given to high court and supreme court judge it is also exempted and allowances from uno any allowances received from uno it is exempted need not to pay tax tax on those allowances allowances given to chairman or member of upsc okay any allowances given to the chairman or members of upsc that is also exempted from tax they need not to pay the tax on those allowances so in these four situations it is exempted they need not to pay tax on these four allowances which are received by a respective person next thing is perk visits so what is perk visits perk visits is nothing but the benefit provided by the employer okay the two the non monetary benefit provided by the employer to his employee is called perk visits okay non monetary benefit provided by the employer to his employee is called perk visits that is non monetary is nothing but not paying cash but 
giving him some services okay giving him some facilities for example telephone bill paid on behalf of the employee employee used the telephone and he got 1000 rupees of bill at the end of the month so he is not paying 1000 on behalf of him you are paying as an employer you are paying 1000 okay so here the employee is not receiving any cash okay he is not receiving any cash but he received telephone facility and that amount is paid by the employer that is called perquisite so any non monetary benefit received by the employee by the employer is called perquisite and it is a non cash benefit yes he will not be providing you the cash but he will be providing you the benefit who will provide employer will provide you next it is given to a positioned employee yes it is not given to everyone it is given to a positioned employee perquisites are the non monetary benefits received by the employee from the employee yes as we already discussed the perquisites is nothing but a non monetary benefit provided by the employer to his employee is called perquisites moving further perquisites denote a personal advantage yes it is a personal advantage given by the employer to the employee in order to motivate that employee in order to motivate the employee the employee is going to give some personal benefits to him so that he'll work more for the benefit of the company next if it is given in kind it should be capable of being measured in terms of money yes even if you are giving you know any perquisites that should be measurable that should be measurable in the terms of money for example if you are paying telephone bill what is the amount you paid whether 1000 2000 if you are providing the car services to your employee on daily basis what is the monetary how can you determine how we have to determine in monetary value whether it's 2000 10000 how much so whatever the service you provide that should be capable of being measured in terms of money and the examples for perquisites providing house that is rent free accommodation providing car facility providing laptop to the employees providing tea snacks to the employees this all comes under perquisites next moving further the taxable perquisites so any facility of rent free house or house for concessional rent that is taxable next payment of life insurance premium of the employee if the employer is paying the life insurance LIC premium of the employee on behalf of the employee then it is also taxable payment of employees obligations like the employee is supposed to pay but on behalf of employee the employer is paying that is also taxable because you are receiving the services right next holiday enjoyment free food club expenses expenses charged to credit card these all items are these all perquisites are taxable on this perquisites you are supposed to pay as an employee you are supposed to pay tax to the government because you will be receiving the services from your employer and it is it can be measured in the terms of money next taxable perquisites in specified cases only so in specified cases the taxable perquisites are facility of car or sweeper facility watchman facility gardener and personal att attendant gas electrical energy and water facility education facility to the member of employees household and transport facility in this kind of facilities it is taxable okay next moving further tax free perquisites that means in if the employer is providing these many facilities it is tax free it is not taxable he is not to pay tax on these kind of perquisites if he is receiving from the employer in that first one reimbursement of medical expenses okay if the employer is going to reimburse your medical expenses it is not taxable and refreshment facility recreational facilities telephone facility personal accident insurance family planning convenience facility leave travel concession free holiday trip and interest free loan in this kind of facilities if you are receiving these kind of perquisites from your employer then you need not to pay tax on these perquisites so these are all called tax free perquisites and they might ask this question in your exam to list out any 10 or any 5 tax free perquisites under this income from salary they might ask this question for 5 marks or for 2 marks in your exam this is very much important from the viewpoint of exam so these are all the tax free perquisites so with this i'm going to wind up this session i'll come up with few more new topics in the upcoming session until then thank you all have a nice day namaste